Welcome yogis to this power core strength vinyasa practice. So before we get started, there may be a few little props you'd like to go and grab. That might be a yoga block, one or two of those might be appropriate for this class. If you have trouble with mobility, also a yoga strap's quite good if you need that for flexibility. Not a necessity, however, as I do give modifications. And then we're going to start the practice seated, cross-legged. If you find that's a bit of a struggle, you can sit on the yoga block initially. Just while we do the breath work, it might make that position more attainable for you. And then in the seated position, press into the six bones, bony little bits at the base, lengthen the spine, roll the shoulders up and back. So you're nice and open in the chest and long through the back of the neck. You're going to start to slow down and deepen your breath. So taking a deep breath in through the nose, two, three, four, and back out through the nose, two, three, four. Deep breath in, and a long breath out. Those who are familiar with our victorious breath, Ujjayi Pranayama, you may start clenching the back of the throat and working with that breath. Just remember it is a heated breath. So if you don't want to feel heated, you have a medical condition, it's a little hot outside today, then just stick with breathing in and out through the nose. We're working today on being a little bit more adaptable and that requires a real willingness to let go, release. And we can start with that in the body. So on your next exhale, allow yourself, your body to totally let go and release. Letting go of any tightness, any tension throughout the body. And you can also let go of any rigidity in the mind. And I like to imagine the mind is picturing it like a blue sky. And any thoughts that come and go being like white fluffy clouds in the blue sky of the mind. So we're not trying to totally dismiss thoughts. That can be impossible. But just allowing the thoughts that come just to pass as easily. So we're not fixated rigidly on any thoughts. And we can also let go emotionally. And to do that, just allowing whatever emotions you've got at the moment just to be accepting things as they are in this moment and not thinking things should be any different. And then with that nice slow deep breath, we're just going to maintain that throughout the class and I'll bring your awareness back to the breath regularly to keep you in what I like to call now sight, the way present in this moment. So as you breathe in, we're going to interlace the hands, turn the palms to face out, and on your exhale breath, push the palms away and round the back. And then on your inhale, starting at the tailbone, link by link, lengthen the spine and raise the arms above the head. Bend the arms a little and get the shoulder blades plugged into the back ribs, opening up through the inner shoulders and draw the front rib cage in and down. Now keeping that alignment, arms in the shoulders, just start to straighten the arms just to where that shoulder girdle allows. Keeping the length inhale, exhale leaning to your right. Inhale back to center. 
Exhale, leaning to your left. Inhale, back to centre. And then with the upper body, on your next out breath, a little twist to your right. Inhale, back to centre. Exhale, twist into the left. Inhale, back to centre. Releasing the hands behind and using that same inter interlocution, <laughs> it's not really a word, interlace the hands behind, straighten the arms and send the hands upwards, opening the chest again. If you like, you could even offer the chest and chin. Upwards, and then tucking the chin back down. So keep the hands interlaced. You're going to bend the arms and swing the hands to your right hip. Try and relax the shoulders away from the ears. Now, if that feels a little uncomfortable with this right arm, you can straighten the right arm and reach the left hand around the upper arm. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, we're leaning our head towards those hands. Getting a stretch through the left side of the neck. And then if you'd like, you could take the head diagonally back. Whatever feels okay, diagonal head. All the way down towards the floor. And then looking back up, we're taking the interlaced hands to the left hip, or you might have that left arm straight. Lengthen on the inhale. Exhale, we're leaning head towards the hands. And leaning the head diagonally back. And the head diagonally forward. Releasing the head to the floor. And hands coming back upwards. So trying to be a little bit more adaptable in our practice on and off the mat today. We're actually in um, a regional lockdown at the moment. And so I'm filming, me, filming this from an outdoor room in my home. So you may even hear children playing because they're not at school. You might hear people talking as well. So again, the practice of being adaptable, adjusting readily to different conditions. So moving on now, we're gonna come on to hands and knees. Knees are aligned under the hips. Hands are aligned under the shoulders. And then we're going to drop the chest and belly and lift the chin for cow pose. Pushing into the hands and knees, reverse that curve. Tailbone and head towards the floor. Three more in sync with your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Rounding. You're feeling the breath with movement. Inhale. You're just getting there at the end of the inhale. Exhale. Just getting there at the end of the exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. And coming back to neutral alignment of the spine. I like to move the hands forward one hand length because we're heading into a down facing dog and spread the fingers wide. Think of pressing into the fingertips like gecko fingers and the outer palms and you might feel the inner palms lift a little like a suction cap. That's what we want. And then from here, curl the toes under, lift the knees and hips up and back. Downward facing dog. So on our first downward dog, it can be helpful to ease into it by bending one leg, straightening the other. Switch the bent leg over. And just ease into that like you're walking the feet out. Good. And then bend both legs. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. Keep the pelvis where it is in neutral alignment. And then start to straighten the legs just to where 
the pelvis allows without moving that pelvis. So if the legs are slightly bent, that is fine. Keeping that pelvis neutral. Arm hits turn towards each other so that you come broad, come broad across the upper back. And my heels are hiding behind my ankles. I'm going to start to bend the legs and walk the feet towards the hands. Feet are hip width. And let the hands just drape towards the floor. Allow the weight of the head to draw towards the floor as well. Ragdoll pose. If you want to go a little deeper, hands can come to opposite elbows. And you might even like to sway the body or swing the body side to side to get a little deeper and loosen up a little more. Another nice way to get rid of some of that tension, tightness and rigidity in the body. So a little bit more flexible and adaptable. Releasing the hands towards the floor and then maybe rolling onto the balls of the feet. Rolling back onto the heels a few times. Finding your center of balance here. Once you've found that, push into the balls of the feet and the heels, like tripods, gripping down. And then you'll start to lift up through the belly. And then fly link. Stack the spine, roll the shoulders up and back. And then we're gonna reach the hands towards the sky. So I'm them like a fern unfurling to the sky, or a sail unfurling to the sky. And then from here, hands can come together at heart centre. Pausing for a moment. Allowing for that sense of release. Letting go. So we can be a little bit more adaptable in our practice today, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And reaching the arms back up to the sky, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. So you notice I do a lot more folding and curved back, and I'm filling the back. It's called straight vinyasa. Working more organically in the body. Inhale, wave the spine long and straight. So fingertips might be touching the floor. If you're not so mobile, you may have hands up on the shins. And then we set back up for our downward facing dog. So fingers spread, a nice long downward dog, because in the core strength vinyasa flow, we head back to downward dog each time and then to high plank. So inhale, lift the heels, bend your legs as you breathe out. Now we want to curve the body, tucking the chin, push forward, straightening the legs as you unfurl the spine. Rather than that linear movement, it's an unfurling. Push into what means the earth, the hands, the balls and the feet to lift the hips and a little drop of the chest through the spine. And then we're going to modify the first one. So dropping down onto the knees. Come forward so elbows are over wrists all the way up to the tummy. Coming onto the tops of the feet. I'm going to push into the tops of the feet and unfurl the spine again, waving up along through the back neck. And back down. Exhale. Curl the toes under. Pushing into the hands and feet, and we're back to downward facing dog. And then just adjusting as we did in the beginning, pelvis is neutral. Fingertips out of palms, pressing into the earth, armpits turning towards each other. Feet, hip width. Take another deep breath in. Empty the breath fully. And we're walking the feet up towards the hands. Now the feet or the toes can be together. Or you can keep the feet hip width apart, which is how I like to work for a more natural stance. Inhale. 
Waving the spine long. Adi Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, grounding the back. Drop the head, Uttanasana. Push into the feet, we roll up. Unfurl the arm. We're going to come all the way back down again. Uttanasana. Exhale. Adi Uttanasana. Inhale. Step it back again, hands forward. And spread down the facing dog. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Lifting the heels, inhale. Bend the legs, exhale. Wave forward, high plank. Now from here you can modify on the knees or your full variation. We come forward, elbows over wrists, chaturanga. Onto the tops of the feet, cobra or upward facing long dog. Open chest and long through back neck. Coming all the way back onto the feet, the balls of the feet, down facing dog. Try not to dip too much into the armpits, a little lift of the armpits. And shoulder, uh, rib cage drawing in and down. Again, lift the heels, inhale. Bend the legs, exhale. Look forward, we're gonna step or jump. Now if you're jumping, you wanna get a little airborne. So on the exhale, pull, tally, pull the belly into the spine. And jump to the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Drop the hips a lot. Lift up through the chest, arms to the sky. Utkatasana, chair pose. Weights back into the heels, and I can see my ten toes. You can't move the knees back a little further. One more deep breath in. Exhale, fold forward. Wave the spine along. Step or lightly jump back to that long down facing dog. Stay in downward dog if you want. You don't have to go through this full vinyasa. If you do want to, wave it forward. Inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale. Downward facing dog. And then inhale, raise the right leg to the sky. Hips are square, inner thighs lifting. Knee to nose, we're gonna bring that right knee towards the chest. Push into the hands and the knees get as high as you can here. Take that right leg back up to the sky. Come through that tiger curl again. And this time bring the right foot to the right thumb. Wave the spine long, pushing into both feet, rolling up. There's a bunch. So bending that back leg just for a moment. Belly's drawing in and up. Keep that neutral alignment of the pelvis and only straighten that back leg to where that pelvis allows. So you've got a slight Bend back leg, that's fine. Palms face towards each other. Long arms, shoulders soft. Take another deep breath in. Exhale, back heel in and flat. Arms open up. Got my biceps up. Keep them up. Turn the palms down. Right knee over right ankle and I'm gazing over the front middle fingers. Pushing firmly into the triads of the feet or if you prefer to think of it as four corners of the feet, a little bit like roller skates. Stay to empty the breath. Inhale, reversing the warrior. I like to take the arms down Left arm to the back leg, the right hand scoops all the way up and back. And then hands, cartwheel to frame the front foot. 
from hip hook up, kick up that front foot. How do we do that? We push into the hands, the ball of the back foot, tiger curl it, and then back to downward dog. Ready for the other side. Breath in, mindfully raise that left leg, hip square, inner thigh lifting. Bend the limbs, I like to, and then you push and re straighten the limbs to come to that tiger curl. Gives you a little bit more height to bring the leg eventually through. Bend the limbs again. Inhale, take that leg up. Bend the limbs. Left foot to left thumb and wave the spine long to decompress. Push into both feet. Rolling up. Remember, belly in, pelvis neutral. Then straightening that back leg just to where the body allows. Deep breath in, exhale, back heel in and flat, opening the arms, biceps up, palms down, even here, willingness to let go, be adaptable, go with the flow. Stay to empty the breath, hands lower. Front arm heads to the back. And you could look straight up. Hands frame the front foot. Push into what meets the earth. Hands, ball of the back foot to come to tiger curl. With that knee to chest. Back to downward dog. Stay resting in downward dog. Yes, it is a resting pose. Doesn't feel like it if you knew. I never realized this. Lifting. Bending, wave it forward, inhale. Modifying if you want on the knees. Chaturanga Dandasana. Into Cobra. Or Upward Facing Dog. And back to Downward Facing Dog. Now we are going to speed this up if that's not for you. Just practice right side, left side like we just did. Nice and slow. If you want to speed it up, follow me. So we're stepping or jumping, feet to the hands. Breath in, wave long. Exhale, fold. Drop the hips lot. We're back to chair pose, Ukkatasana. Deep breath in. Exhale, fold forward. Waving long, inhale. Step or float back. Down facing dog. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Bending the limbs, inhale, right leg up. Bring it through to the right thumb. Rolling up, Anjani Asana, present lunge. Straight into our warrior two. Reverse it on the inhale. Hands to the floor, exhale. Pick up that foot, back to down dog. Inhale, left leg, lift. Bring it through to the left thumb. Push down to raise up, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Reversing the warrior, leaning back, inhale. Hands to the floor, back to down dog. Other side, right side, lifting, inhale. Foot through, exhale. Rising up, inhale, opening, exhale, leaning back, inhale, hands frame the front foot, back to dog, last side, inhale, lift leg, bring it through, reach up, inhale, exhale, Reverse it, inhale, exhale, hands to the floor, downward dog. Stay resting in downward dog, wave through your flow, exhale, inhale, exhale. Couple of breaths in downward dog. Before we move on, and remember you can take a rest anytime you need to. You can drop down on the knees, 
toes together, dropping the bottom to the floor, and slide forward as you drop onto the crown of your head, child's pose, balasana, nice resting pose. You can stay as long as you need to. And those who are ready to move on, we make our way back to downward facing dog. So for this one, we're starting to really work into the core. So, bending the right leg in your downward dog. So let's call it a bent downward dog. From here, way forward with that bent leg still to your high plank. Let the chest drop through the shoulders. Now switch the legs that are bent. So left leg is now bent, right leg is straight. Send the hips back. Down facing dog. Keep the left leg bent into our plank on the left. Switch the leg set of bent to right leg bent now and back to that bent dog. Now raise the right leg to the sky. Inhale. So we've got the hip square, inner thigh lifting. Now we're going to lower that right leg to the left heel, right foot to the left heel. So I've got my big toe and my next toe wrapped around that heel. From here, way forward to your high plank again, Dandasana. Pushing into the hands and the feet. Now lift that right leg towards the sky and lower it back down where it came from, on the heel. Lift the right leg back up and then this time tiger curl, knee to chest, and continue extending the right foot to the right thumb. Waving the spine nice and long. Now we're coming into revolved crescent lunge. Or revolved low lunge. I'm gonna circle the arms three times. So following me, I'm gonna start off by bending the left leg. Same arm as front leg. Right arm circles. Now we follow the hand with our gaze. When it reaches the top, straighten that back leg. Lengthening and rotating. And then this hand comes all the way down and then exhale, bend the back leg. As it reaches forward and up to the top of the circle, straighten the back leg. We bend it all again as the hand heads back, exhale. And inhale, this time leave the hand up the top. Stay in here for a few breaths. Squeeze, hug the flesh to the bone of your thighs and draw the thighs in towards each other which will help you rotate around the corner a little more. Deep breath in. Exhale, bring the right hand back down to the floor and we're going to drop onto the back knee, the back foot. Half splits. You may even like blocks here for those people who aren't very mobile. So what we're going to do is start to straighten the front leg and flex this foot, pulling the right hip in line with the left. Now for those people who aren't so flexible, you can come up onto the block here, the blocks here, and square up the hips, staying upright. Or you could come to the middle setting and you're here. Or if you've only got the one block, make and do with one block wherever you are. Those who are more mobile, you're on the flat of the palms, and you may even bend the arms a little to bring the chest closer to the legs. So a couple of deep, slow breaths here, just lengthening and stretching the right hamstring. Bending that front leg, waving the spine long, curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, and we lift up, pushing into the feet, back to our crescent lunge. Warrior two, back heel in and flat, opening the arms, gazing over the front middle fingers. So the middle of my right heel is in line with the middle of my left heel, approximately. 
we're going to come into extended side angle, Utita Paswakanasana. So for this one, I've got a few choices. I'm just going to grab my block ready. It could be elbow to the knee. And circling this hand down and all the way back up again, hand to the sky. You could use a block. So we've got the hand to the block. Or you might be fingertips to the floor. Another option is hand coming to the front wall, palm faces down. Or we could do just a half bind today, bringing the back of the palm to your lower back. Or sneaking it a little further down near your right hip to your inner right thigh. Shoulder blades hug towards the back ribs to open the chest. Now you can stay looking straight ahead or tuck the chin, rotate the head to look up. Push a little more into your feet so you can almost lift that hand off the ground so you're in your full leg strength here. With a deep breath in. As you breathe out, release the arms. Come back to your low lunge. Again, you might want the blocks here, so if you're a block person, set the blocks up by the side of the foot. Now, I'm going to bring this back foot in, maybe half to one foot length, and back heel comes in flat. I just move back a little. I've got some room here. Now, I'm pulling this right hip back in line with my left. So if you're not so mobile, use your blocks to bring yourself up higher. Or maybe you're just on one block. Yeah, so that might be you. People who aren't using a block, you might be fingertips to the floor in your pyramid pose. You could be hands to the hips or grabbing hand to opposite elbows. Wherever you are, square the hips. Maybe there's a teensy band in your leg if you're finding this a strain. You could have a straight back or if you're coming deeper, folding over the legs, head towards the knee. A couple more breaths here. And then releasing the hands, bending this front leg, we're on to the ball of that back leg, which I'm sliding back a little for a little lunge. And then we're going to push off. Dekasana, lifting that back leg. Now I can flex it. My hips are square, my inner thigh is lifting. Or I can flank it, where I point the foot and then flex the toes back. Hands can remain on the hips or take them back. Rotating palms to face out, chest bright and open. And there's a little upper back bend here in my aeroplane, Dekasana. Stay here for that out breath. And my back to Tadasana. Inhale. Pausing for an exhale. We're going to come back through our vinyasa flow. I'm just going to turn around and stay where you are. So inhale, reaching the hands to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, wave the spine along. Stepping back. Down the face and up. So coming into our core plank routine again. So it's the left leg that bends in our downward dog, our bent dog. Way forward to your high plank with that left leg still bent. Now switch the leg that's bent to the right. Keep it bent. Hips back, downward dog. Keep that right leg bent, we're waving forward again. High plank. Switch the legs that are bent to the left. Keep that left leg bent. Hips back to our bent dog. Now inhale, raise that left leg to the sky. Tiger curl, knee to the chest. And extend the left foot to the left thumb, waving the spine nice and long. Now we've got our revolved low lunge circles. Same arm as leg. So we're going to bend that back leg, left hand circles, 
Follow the fingertips with your gaze. When the hand reaches the top, we straighten the back leg and rotate. Bend that back leg. And when it comes all the way up, re-straighten the back leg. One more circle. This time, inhale, hand comes all the way up to the top and we straighten the leg and pause here. Lengthening by squeezing the thighs in towards each other. Rotate it a little bit more around the corner. Deep breath in. Exhale, hand comes out the side of the front foot. So from here, our half splits drop onto the back knee. Walking the hands and hips back. Then using your block on whatever setting works best for you or fingertips to the floor or palms to the floor. Just keep pulling left hip in line with right. Maybe a teensy bend if it's too strong. Pit of the belly drawing in towards the spine as well. So even in our day-to-day -day yoga practice, we can learn to be adaptable. Listening to our body, modifying, using props if needed. And that can change from practice to practice day to day, our, our different varying needs. Bending the front leg, hands come forward again. Curl the toes under, rising up, Anjaneyasana. Straight into warrior two, exhale. Extended side angle, elbow to knee, or fingertips to the floor, or hand to your block. And picking what arm position best worked for you. Pushing into both feet evenly. Lengthening the spine and opening the chest and inner shoulder. Deep breath in. Releasing the hands on the out breath. So they frame the front foot. And from here we're coming into our pyramid pose. So again, we're going to bring that back foot in. A little bit. Back heel in and flat. Use your props if you need to to square the hips and be able to have contact with the floor. Advanced or more mobile students, I should say, you might be hands on the hips or hands interlaced to opposite elbow. Nice open inner shoulders, squaring the hips. Maybe folding over that front leg. Pass Bhattanasana, intense side stretch. I'm sure you're feeling an intense stretch through that left side of the body right now. And releasing the hands towards the floor, we're going to bend that front leg, turn the heel up, and lifting up into a lunge, making our way into aeroplane day kasana. Transfer the weight to the front leg. Lifting the back leg. Whoop. Again, foot is flexed or flanking. Your choice. Inner thigh lifts. Hands on the hips. We'll take the arms back. And we open the chest with the teensy up bend. Back bend. Stretch that right foot away to the back wall. Stay here for the out breath. Inhale, Tadasana. Pausing for your exhale. Reaching the arms back up to the sky. Turn around again. And coming all the way back down to the floor. Breath in, wave the spine long. And stepping back to our downward facing dog. Waving forward, high plank. Maybe dropping onto the knees. Take your time to lower all the way down onto your tummy. We're going to take a moment's rest here. Arms by your side, head to one side. 
a moment of stillness. So there are actually three parts to adaptability. The first one is behavioural and that involves adjusting your actions or behaviour. The second part is cognitive, which involves adjusting one's thinking. And emotional, involves adjusting one's positive and negative emotions. Adaptability also refers to the capacity to respond to uncertainty, change, and even novelty. And I'll be talking to you a little bit more about ways that we respond. Now we're going to come into some back bends. So setting off starfish style, hands on a diagonal, I've got much room here, and legs are on a diagonal. So nice and wide apart. Now from here we're going to lift the head and chest. Lift your right arm and your left leg, keeping the inner thigh lifting. Stretch from limb to limb as you lift and try and keep long through the back neck. A way to imagine this, think of an orange behind your neck here. We don't want to juice the orange, squeeze it and juice it. So keep nice and long here. One more deep breath in, exhale lower. Other side, lift the head and chest. Left arm lifts, right leg lifts and stretch them away from each other nice and long. Keeping that length through the back neck, not jutting the chin out. One more deep breath in, exhale release. Arms by your side, bringing the legs back in neutral, maybe resting head to the other side. Okay, we're on here. Coming into maybe locust pose, lifting the head and chest again. You could interlace the hands behind, lifting the hands and lifting the legs perhaps, inner thighs lifting. Or if you want to go deeper, bend the legs, reach the hands to the ankles, push the ankles into the hands and lengthen the spine, getting into a nice back bend. So you've got four to five breaths here. Back bends help to energize us, they're great as a morning practice. Just to help with depression. And then gently release. Arms by your side, head to one side. Bringing the head back to center. Hands under the line of the shoulders. Push into the hands and the knees coming up. Resting again in your child's pose. Knees wide, toes together. Bottom to the feet, reaching out the hands in front. Into a nice little counter pose after that deep back bend. to walk the hands in, lifting the head, and we're going to make our way back to down facing dog. Lift the heels, bend the legs. Now your choice step will get hip on and springy on the exhale, jumping the feet to the hands. Waving this whole long pause here. Just a grip around the big toes and then surrendering the feet wide, surrendering over the legs. So that sense again of release and letting go, 
we can be a little bit more flexible and adaptable. Moon Adha Jandrasana, so we're getting a little bit more flexible and into some balancing, which is great to keep you calm. So from here, and also focused in the present moment. So lining up this right hand under the right shoulder, you could either take it diagonally out to the right, the fingertips. If you're not so mobile, you're using the block on the high setting. It does get a little wobbly here, however or you might be on that middle setting. So again, setting right hand up under the line of the shoulder and then diagonally to the right. So coming into our core strength, half moon, Adha Chandrasana, we do it a little bit of a different way. There's that real sense of um, unfurling again organically. So waiting to the right foot, right fingertips, or hand to the block, curl in this left, hand, left foot, think of a fern, yeah? We're gonna unfurl that fern or unfurl the flag, the sail I should say, the sail of the boat up to the sky. Nice long arm, nice long leg. Now from here, you can stay looking down or start to track the eyes all the way up the wall, rotating a little bit more around the corner and maybe even Walking up to the sky, half moon. And stay in half moon. Or come to sugar cane pose. Grabbing the foot. Pulling the foot up towards the sky. There's a little upper back bend here. So you offer the chest, did not you? Now we're going to transition to standing splits. So I release the left hand to the floor. I square my hips. I straighten that back leg. Again, you might be using your blocks here to come up a little higher, yeah? So with my hips parallel to the floor, shoulders parallel to the floor, I'm going to lift that back leg as high as I can and bring my chest a little closer towards the right shin. Flanking the foot where we point it and flex just the toes back. Deep breath in, exhale. Release the foot, sorry, to a lunge. So ball of the foot back. I'm gonna wiggle this right foot forward a tad. And drop onto my back knee. Push into the back knee, the front foot, to come up. And I'm bringing my hands to that right knee. Push into what meets the earth to lengthen the spine. You could even lean back a little here to get a bit more of a stretch through that left hip flexor. I like to pull the right foot back, left knee forward. That takes some of the strain off, overstretching that back left hip flexor and psoas muscle. Now, if you want to go a little deeper into a twist, I'll set you up with that. Otherwise, stay here where you are. Left hand under the left shoulder. We're circling, same arm as the front leg, the right arm. Up and back. Reaching for that back foot if you can. Lengthen by pulling the front foot, back knee towards each other. And a little twist around the corner. Take a deep, slow breath. Squaring the hips, belly drawing in towards the spine. Deep breath in, release the hand to the floor, exhale. Moving in, transitioning to our pigeon. So toe healing this right foot across to the left side of your mat. Swing your hips and knee forward. Adjusting into half pigeon. So I'm rolling this back thigh under so I can square my hips up. I like to push into the fingertips to wave the spine nice and long. And 
stay up on the hands. Drop down to the forearms. Or you could reach hands out in front and rest your forehead to the earth. Or maybe palms resting under the forehead. Deep, slow breaths. Now I'm going to quickly just show you another pose if this one isn't for you. If you're finding that a struggle, you're going to come onto your back. Bring the right ankle to the left knee. Lift the left foot off the floor. Interlace your hands behind the left hamstring. If you're struggling here to get that head back on the floor, you could use a block under the head. And you're easing the legs towards you. So you're feeling a stretch in whichever pose you're in, in the right glute. So this one's just a pine pigeon. So I like to press about 10% into the earth in the full variation, which I'm in now. Just keeping a little bit active, press into the earth with the, the thighs, the legs. And then maybe from the waist up, that's where your softness is, allowing the upper body to feel soft and relaxed. That 10, 15% press into the earth just keeps the joints a little safer. that you're in. We're going to make our way back to downward facing dog. We could walk that dog out a little. And then again, step or float. Hit the hands. Waving the spine on the tail. Setting up for another forward fold. That might be interlacing the hands behind the back, letting the hands all the way towards the floor behind you, or into our gorilla pose, Padakastasana, placing the palm face up under the foot, and the fingers go all the way back to the front of the heel there. And then you could do a little very gentle, very slight rock forward and back. You don't want to fall over. And then bowing over the legs, dropping the head. You could start to straighten the legs if it feels better. And if you've got lower back issues, you might prefer to keep the legs bent. Or if you just haven't got that kind of mobility. And then setting up for the other side. I'm just going to spin around because it's easier for you to view me that way. Alright, so, left hand under the line of the shoulder, on your fingertips, or on whichever setting of the block you want, and it's diagonally to the left. Think of that fern, or let's go back to that um, sail on the, on the boat, on the ship, on the yacht, drawing that foot and hand in, whoa. So we start to unfurl that sail all the way to the sky for your half moon. Stay looking down or try looking up or maybe just to the side wall. So a little quote that I like here. You can't direct the wind, but you can change your sails. Another way of being a little more adaptable. Bending that top leg, grabbing hold of the foot if you're into the sugar cane pose. Transitioning now to our standing splits. So right hand to the floor, square the hips straight in that back leg. Bringing the leg closer to the 
sky and the shin, the chest closer to the shin. Big slow breaths. Inhale, halfway lift, raising this chest. Lower that back leg. I'm just going to move this left foot forward a little. Coming back into my leg lunge. And I'm going to drop onto the back knee and foot. And adjust my hands to the knee. Pull the left foot towards you. Right knee in, they're going in towards each other. Maybe lean back a little bit for a little more stretch here. Stay here or right hand to the floor. Coming into our twist, reaching back, grabbing the back foot if that works for you and is attainable. Fine length in the spine as you breathe in. Exhale, rotating around the corner. that back leg, toe, heel the foot across, into your half pigeon, waving long, back thigh rolling under, coming into what hand position best works for you, and remember you can come on your back, the supine pigeon, left ankle to knee, interlacing the hands under the right hamstring. So I mentioned earlier that adaptability refers to the capacity to respond to uncertainty, change, and even novelty. So thinking about how you respond when there's difficult conditions, there's change, uncertainty. If we go around pretty unconscious, we're on autopilot all the time, then how we're going to respond will be more of a reaction. And sometimes we can be a little bit regretful of how we react in situations. But if we are more conscious and we're always quite present and we act from now sight, then that response is going to be quite different. It's going to be um, it's going to be an action, not a reaction. You're going to choose. So being present is a real gift to us. When we're present, we're able to pause. If there's a change in circumstances or we're having a difficult emotion to deal with, and we're able to choose how we want to act, and then we will be less regretful <clears throat> and quite often it's how we choose to act in a situation that can make things easier for us. We end up feeling less suffering. So noticing how you respond in different conditions. Do you have that willingness to let go, get present and choose how you're going to react or choose how you're going to act. Starting to come upright, we're just going to turn to your right, I'm facing towards you, you may be facing the side, it just gives you the length of your mat to open your legs wide. Upavista Kanasana, a straddle pose. So inner thighs lift, toes and knees face directly up. We press into the sit bones. Again, to lengthen nice and tall, long through the back neck. I'm going to lift the left arm. Right hand can start to slide towards the ankle if the body allows. Or you might be dropping either side of the leg onto the forearm, up to you. Hand reaches towards the side wall, trying to relax that shoulder in the socket. 
If it feels uncomfortable here, you might prefer hand to the head. Those who are more mobile, you might be able to reach towards the opposite foot. And a little peeling around the corner, rotating on the exhale. You can stay looking to the front, or tuck the chin and rotate the head to look up. Stay here for your out breath. Inhale, come up over to the other side, reaching the right arm up and over, reaching for the foot, side wall, or maybe it's just hand to the head and relaxing that shoulder. Keep the toes and knees facing directly up. to empty the breath. Inhale coming upright. Keeping the toes and knees facing up, walking the hands forward a little. So you might be just up on the hands. You could lower down onto the elbows. If you're quite mobile, you might be pistol grip and dropping the chest all the way to the floor, lowering onto the chin. But just picking a position that is attainable for you. And by flexing the feet and squeezing the quads, you get the legs a little straighter. But maybe you prefer to work with bent legs and that's fine too. Couple more breaths here. So awareness on your inhale breath from start to finish. And following your out breath, from start to finish. And this could be a practice that you do regularly whether you're in a yoga pose or not, helping you to stay more mindful, more present. And starting to come upright. Help those legs back together using the length of your mat to stretch the legs out. Again, you could keep the legs slightly bendy, which I prefer. The pelvis tilts. I'm sending the sit bone back and the top front edges of my pelvis comes forward. And then from here, you can reach the hands either side of the legs, pistol grip around the big toes, or interlacing the hands around if you're quite mobile. So find which one you wanna work with, wave the spine long and then easing over the legs, bowing the head. You can keep the legs bent the whole time or maybe in time with the breath. You might find that the legs naturally start to straighten a little. And if that does happen, working with that. If you've got lower back issues, maybe keep the legs bent. Bhattanasana into a counter pose. So the advanced variation is fingers facing towards the feet. We push into the hands, the feet are together and are pushing into the whole flat of the foot lifting the chest, trying not to crush that, uh, just that orange again. Dropping down, I'll just show you the modified variation, which is going to be a lot easier. Feet are hip width. The feet are also hip width apart. And we lift up the hips. Tabletop pose. So the more you push into the hips, the feet and the hands, the easier it is to lift the hips. You could stay looking up or to the back corner of the roof. Again, noticing the orange. Tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth activates the neck flexor, keeping your neck safe. Keep breathing here, pushing into what meets the earth to lift the hips and heart. One more deep breath in, 
exhale, drop the hips and lower. Sliding onto the back now. Straightening the left leg. Bring your left hand to the right knee. Draw that knee in. Right hand is out to the side. Level with the shoulder. I like to just shimmy my hips to the right a little bit. And then bring that right knee across the body so you're a little bit more onto the left hip. Adjust your shoulder square to the floor and look towards the right hand. Flexing the feet, keeping the legs firm, active, is a little safer on the joints. And then just relax the shoulders, relax the body from the waist up. Keeping the activation from the waist down. Allowing for the mind to naturally wander. Thinking again of the mind as a blue sky. Thoughts as white clouds in the mind. Letting the thoughts just come and go naturally. Not getting stuck or fixated. Or thought letting it just drift on by. Just being a witness to the thoughts as they come and go. No attachment. Back to centre, switching the leg that's bent, right leg straight, left hand to the left knee, shimmy the hips at the tipsy bit to the left, taking that left knee across the body, square the shoulders and look to the left. back to centre. Happy baby. And we raise the feet to the sky. Bend the legs lots. You can reach the hands to the inside or the outside of the feet. Pull the feet down towards the floor so the knees head down to the floor. The feet are parallel to the roof and the shins are perpendicular to the roof. So making like a right angle with the legs. And then actively push your feet into your hands and keep that sacrum, the lower back, on the mat. Now, if you struggle to do, keep that lower back on the mat, I want you to slide your hands to your shins instead and get that lower back on the mat. So the feet aren't down near the bottom. The feet are up towards the sky. Push feet into the hands, keep active. Feel free to stay there a little rock. Rock side to side. Getting a little massage on the lower back. Yeah, that feels good. And then we're going to release the legs to the ground. Ready for corpse pose? Shavasana. Now this isn't just a rest pose, it is a pose. It is an asana, corpse. So you're nice and still, like a corpse pose. It says it all. If you're uncomfortable here, you're feeling a nagging ache in the lower back, instead of the long legs with the feet apart, you can bend those legs. And then the feet are wide, let the knees knock in towards each other. 
your hands are slightly away from your hips, palms facing up. If the arms feel uncomfortable, feel free to bend the arms and bring hands to the hips. Closing the eyes. And again, practicing now sight, staying present. We, relax, we let go of that slowed down controlled breath. You're back to a natural breath. However, still being aware of your breath will help you to stay present. Again, being a witness to the sensations of the body, the thoughts that come and go, the emotions that bubble away. And see if you can come to a place of allowing Allowing whatever is there to be there, accepting. Without fixating or embellishing what arises. Just a sense of allowing. Not expecting things to be different. Allow your body just to drift into the earth. Whole body feeling warm, heavy, and relaxed. Now you can rest here as long as you wish. It could be two to seven minutes. Just let this keep flowing through so you get some time of stillness, which is important after our practice. 